Marco Pierre White was the best chef this country has ever produced. Marco was seen as the Picasso of his trade. Then the legend left the kitchen for good. Until now. I suppose it's a bit like a great boxer. He feels he has one fight left within him. Hell's Kitchen is back, and it's under Marco's management. I have to use all my knowledge to get us through this. All that stands between Marco and Mayhem are ten novice celebrity chefs. It's an opportunity to learn more about cooking from one of the best chefs in the world. Trust me, you are capable of doing everything on that menu. Now two kitchens must go head to head. Girls to my left, boys to my right. Definitely going to win. It's men versus women. We've got to win. I'm scared. But who will earn Marco's respect? I just want to get it right, that's all. Oh, you don't open it. I don't thrive that well under stress. I was not talking to you, I'm talking to you. Jim, Barry. I can only take a certain amount of abuse. It's opening night. Shit, I've really hit the fan. And as 76 diners oh, no. prepare to deliver their verdict. I'm not taking that kind of SHIT. Oh, shit. The pressure ah. is on. I haven't been in the kitchen for seven and a half years. Communicate. So I'm relying on you. Keep on pushing. We haven't got long left. They chose to be here. I didn't choose them to be here. They're there to cook. Good evening and welcome to the hotbed of glamour and excitement that is Hell's Kitchen. The restaurant already being hailed by London's leading critics as absolutely free. Over the next fortnight, ten celebrity chefs will be diced, sliced and roasted for your viewing pleasure before being reduced to one overall winner, chosen by you, the great viewing public. The head chef is this year the legendary Marco Pierre White. Marco Pierre, of course, because he's originally from Leeds. Uh, there he is behind me, literally live as we speak. Uh, but who is this man, known by many as a genius, and by others by that lunatic uh, who threatened me with a meat cleaver and kicked me out of his restaurant? Marco Pierre White was the best chef this country has ever produced. He was the first big British chef. He kind of looked good and married supermodels. He was the governor then and uh, he's the governor still. January 1995, I won my three stars in the Michelin Guide. I didn't feel joy or happiness in a strange way. I was quite sad, quite depressed. It was like I'd come to the end of my race. He worked out that he knew more about food than the Michelin judges did. Marco produced food that would have to be as good a food as any chef in the world has produced. One day, I thought to myself, I'm not enjoying it. And so what did I do? At 38, I left the kitchen. I did all the things that I'd wanted to do for years. I discovered myself as a person. He's a general, and I think he likes leaving his army. And what he needs is he needs his army back again. I suppose it's a bit like a great boxer. He feels he has one fight left within him. Yeah, you know, I think he's a happier man when he's got his whites on. I've been banging on for years about the fact that he should go back into the kitchen. Quickly. My whole objective to step back into the ring is to inspire people to want to cook. Marco Dinghill's kitchen is, is, is brilliant. General Marco! His ability to motivate and inspire is massive and, and needs a vehicle to do it, and this is that vehicle. My job is to feed 70 people a night to a standard, full stop. Just keep your head down, do your job. If I don't feed everybody night one, then I have failed. I take the greatest risk. I'm not the youngest cook in the world. I haven't got the legs I had when I was 30, when I was 25, when I was 20. I can see failure. You know, it's like an avalanche coming down on me, but that's fine. If things start going pear-shaped and uh, people don't deliver what they're supposed to deliver, then we, we, we could see some, uh, some, some reaction. If Marco gets under big pressure, anything could happen. My reputation is a product of exaggeration and ignorance. Did I shout? Yes. Did I scream? At times. Service is service. And in service, chefs shout. This is Gordon. 
he remains the only human being, as far as I'm aware, who's ever made Gordon Ramsay cry. No, I didn't make Gordon Ramsay cry. He made himself cry. That was his choice to cry. It's a kitchen, it's a tough place. Yes, the man who made Gordon Ramsay cry. But uh, don't worry, underneath that cold, hard exterior beats a heart of anthracite. So we've met the governor, seems like a nice chap, and we're getting to know his philosophy. Marco did not cut that fish in half, it chose to be cut in half. Still, what about the poor sods, the lucky celebrities that Marco has to turn into chefs? The words slaughter and lambs may well spring to mind. <laughs> <laughs> this is not nice. It's an opportunity to learn more about cooking from one of the best chefs in the world. And he's a bit fiery, isn't he? So that could be interesting. I want to learn how to cook. I want to be taught by Marco, and anyone would die to be in this position, and I just think it'll be a great experience. You don't want to do it now, do you? No. <laughs> no, yeah. I'm scared, though. You got cock? No. No? They can I mean, wash up as well then. So. Boiled eggs. Yeah. Are you joking? I'm not hard, I'm a nice guy. But I can only take a certain amount of sort of abuse and I sincerely hope he didn't start that. I wouldn't want to lose my cool. What's your level of culinary skills? Are? I like to think I'm good, but oh, I'm not. Really? I can only make a roast dinner and chicken soup. Here we are in hell. Hello, Marco. I haven't been in the kitchen in a while. I think I'm probably better in the bedroom. Why the silence? What's going on? I'm just too nervous to talk. <laughs> oh, the next victim. <laughs> Hi. Are you good? How are you doing? Hi. Hi. Nice to see you. The most amazing feeling when you're cooking for someone is to watch their faces in pure delight of what they're tasting. We, we haven't got served the food as well, have we? No. 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 They, we're not allowed out. I'm really looking forward to it. I'm really excited about it, and I'm also really pretty scared. Of course, I'm competitive. I mean, I wouldn't have ended up being a newspaper editor if I wasn't competitive. I'm doing Hell's Kitchen because so far I've only cooked for pleasure, and it was a de-stress uh, to do something different that wasn't music. And uh, whereas this is going to be the other side of the coin, I'd say, I've got to try and keep my cool, so I'll end up chopping my own fingers off and serving those up. Hello. No, Hello. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Oh my god, he looks amazing. I'm quite basic. To describe me cooking, my mum says she can't even boil an egg. But that's why I want to do the show. So I can learn to cook and be the quest for the perfect wife. Where is the man himself? He's gonna come out the floor, isn't he? Dressed in a devil outfit, I think. With a fork. <laughs> god, it's amazing. Do I like cooking? How do I answer this with a big fat no? I don't like cooking. I've never really had to cook, but bizarrely, I did home economics in school. Hmm, couldn't have guessed that. Oh my God. I'm not a natural cook at all. I just have a complete almost phobia about being in a kitchen. I always feel I want to be somewhere else. Very sexy photo of Marco Pierre White. Yes, she does. Slight just that. cigarette just hanging in a rather nonchalant though. way. I'm liking that slightly Slight, just like, dirty slightly hair look and the fag. Girls to my left, boys to my right. Thank you. Welcome to Hell's Kitchen. It's 
It's good to have you all. Tomorrow night, we've got to feed 76 people. And for me, that's a very big challenge. Because I haven't been in the kitchen for seven and a half years. So I'm relying on you. But let's not forget one thing. You're going to rely on me. You looking forward to it? Yeah. So I've nailed my colours to the mast. I expect all of you to do the same. And what I will do, very quickly, is decide why you're here. Whether you're here for the right reason or the wrong reason. If someone's here for the wrong reason, I will deal with them personally. I will expose them like they've never been exposed before. Trust me. Because I take this very serious. Jim, how are you, boy? I'm Michael. Nice see to see you again. Nice to see you again. Why are you here, Jim? I've got two weeks of a cookery lesson that I couldn't buy for a million pounds. You're absolutely right, Jim. Good to have you on board. Thank you. Um, because I, I haven't asked you anything oh, yet. Oh, so sorry. I? Yes, sorry, forgive me. You're quick out the blocks. Who are you? Oh, my name's Brian Dowling, and I'm here because I'm completely hopeless in the kitchen. Good. Can't do anything at all, and it's also that's a challenge. You, that's what you think? I think so, yes. Well, see, let's change your mind. Mm. Hello, Paul. Hello. Nice to have you. Why are you here, Paul? Oh, I'm here because I like cooking, but my skills are pretty basic, I suppose. And, uh, well, I've heard you like cooking. I've heard you're fairly good with a pan and a knife. <laughs> I look forward to watching. <laughs> OK. And who are you? Barry McGuigan, Michael. Nice ah, to meet you. Barry. Nice to see How you. are you, boy? I'm fine, thank you very much. Well, I'm very excited that you're here, because this is going to be your toughest fight. <laughs> damn, damn right it is, because uh, I have very little skills in the kitchen. But remember, you're going to go down many times. Yes. But you'll pick yourself back up. Who are you? Lee Ryan, nice to meet you. And why are you here? Take your hat off. Show me some respect. Look at me as the judge. What are you famous for? Singing. And what did you sing? I used to be in a group called Blue. Where was those going? No. That's enough. Hello, Kelly LeBrock. Don't need to shake your hand. Sorry. I know about you. Who are you? Crazy boycott. No shaking. Not necessary. And who are you? Um, it was the newspaper editor. I found it spare rib. Um, I know which paper? The Independent on Sunday to start with, and the Independent, and then the Daily Express. Um, and I have. Well, the Daily Express suits you fine, doesn't it? Who are you? I am Abby Clancy. Who do? Who are you? Adele Silver. And what do you do? I'm an actress. Okay, you can fake it. Who are you? <laughs> Anne Rice. I thought so. If I see you in a helicopter. <laughs> The reason why I've separated you is to simplify things and to satisfy my own curiosity. Who cooks the best, boys or girls? Yes, who's best, boys or girls? And remember, we're not talking about parking a car or throwing a ball, so it's not as easy as you'd think. Interesting that Marco had no idea about any celebrity who's become famous since 1987. Now, after the novice chefs had met and instantly fallen in love with Marco, it was time for their first test, and it certainly was in at the deep end. Each novice was, would you believe, given an egg and asked to cook it. So, what would Marco get? An omelette, a souffle, or just salmonella? The first thing I want you to do, something very simple. Before I can position you, I need to know what you're up to. So I want you to all cook me an egg dish. Your choice. Omelette, scramble, poached, fried, I don't care. You've got 10 minutes, OK? Our first chore was to cook an egg, um, which immediately put everybody on the spot. Marco, can I ask one question? No. No? All right, fine. You're not here to ask questions. All you right. need to say yes, chef. How easy can an egg be? Actually, it can be really hard when you're trembling inside. That's a lovely wrist action you've got there, girl. Come on, Barry. Oh, where have my eggs gone? Am I not here? I think I've taken yours. Yeah, do it. Are, are they? OK, sorry. Don't worry, sure. The first workstation, I set up all my things on. Someone came and stood there and took it over, so that was lucky, because that wasted a minute. Oh, God, that was mine. I was here. And then I set up somewhere else, and the same thing happened. Um, OK. Sorry, I'm sorry, Rosie. I... OK, I'll go. Barry, you're going a bit quick, mate. You'll have to start again. That won't take five minutes to cook in that pan. OK. So I'd like to see us bring in your step, Barry. How long does it on the take? Five minutes? Yeah. I'm putting it in. Are you making a mess or making eggs? I'm making scrambled eggs. Three minutes left. 
What are you doing? I'm attempting an omelette. Whatever state in two minutes on the pass. So... Thirty seconds left. Five seconds. One, two, three, four, five. Good girl. Coming up. Abby's eggs are scrambled by Marco. It hurts me. And Brian gets some food for thought. Brave pig's trotter. I want to see someone eating the foot of a pig that walks in shit. Welcome back to Hell's Kitchen, where before the break, we saw our celebrities prove that old saying, you can't make an omelette. So having let them loose in the kitchen, it was time for Marco to assess their various offerings. Offerings that brought a whole new meaning to the phrase, I can murder an egg. Mm. Surprising what you can tell about an egg, isn't it? When someone's cooked it. Tells you more about them than the egg. Well, it tastes of egg, Jim. No, I think it that's about it. It definitely tastes no, of egg. I think that's about it. Looks like a desert island on a disc, doesn't it? I now believe you why you're here. He said, yeah, I can see exactly why you've come in here. I thought, oh, he can see that I like my cooking. And he threw it back. He said, it tastes like overcooked toast. Overcooked toast. <laughs> Which is not what I was thinking I was going to get. And no seating, Barry. See, it's fine me criticising. But you have a taste yourself. Is this a pancake you've made me? <laughs> No, but, uh, no, that's not, it's, it's, it's... I was almost... quite impressed to say you couldn't cook. Oh. I could clean down the surfaces with this, couldn't I? <laughs> like a dish cloth. <laughs> nice choice of plate. Tells me a lot about you as a person. <laughs> <laughs> but what's very nice is, the yolks are cooked there perfectly. To do a poached egg in a ten minute time frame is incorrect. Ambitious, because the secret of poaching an egg perfectly is having deep water. So when you tip your egg, your, your egg into the water, it falls to the bottom, it, it engulfs it in yeah. the white, and it slowly floats to the surface. Okay. I didn't know that. But I've got to say, perfectly cooked yolks. <clears throat> well, that's the best out of all the boys. Thank you. Good. Mm -hmm. It hurts me. I wanted to cry then, but because I was just shocked, I thought, oh God, you're just picking on me. It's best to hide certain things, isn't it? Sorry? It's best to hide certain things. Eggs, perfume, little things like that. It was just like making me feel dead intimidated. And he knew that, so he kept looking at me and I was just like, oh, not looking at him. This is not, this is all right, this isn't it? What's it taste like then? Half of it's undercooked and half of it's overcooked. That's a very special talent you have there, Rosie. Oh, my goody. I could enjoy that on toast. You're doing rather well, haven't you? I think the girls are doing better than the boys. It's interesting how you do that, isn't it, girl? I think my scrambled egg was really rather disappointing. I'm so inexperienced with cooking, I mean, I'm just completely out of my depth. Interesting. So this is for presentation. 
So it's all about presentation, not flavour. That's what you're telling me at this point. Well, no, it is about flavour, obviously. Yeah, it's right. It's it's about flavour, isn't it? Yeah, nice nice bit of flavour. Yeah, yeah, right. But it's nice that you've used white pepper, not black pepper. Would you eat it? Yeah. Okay, you eat it. You expected me to eat it, so when you've finished eating it, you can start cooking. Well, all of it? Yeah, of course. I think I'll make it look really pretty. So I just dusted, like, pepper, but it didn't taste very nice. And I think I put too much pepper in. Now we'll do with you. Don't they look better now? Yeah. No, I don't think so now. You don't? Because I what like don't you like eggs. About, what don't you like about them? I personally, the way I'd make them, I wouldn't turn them over and cook the yolk. I like runny yolk, so that's why I did it. Look at the base of the egg. Look at the base of oh, the egg. Oh, because it's brown. Do you like a bit of crunch? Are you egg? Oh. Oh, you just noticed it, have you? Yeah, sorry. Are you a member of Densa? Sorry? Said nothing, don't worry about it. There was shell underneath, but when the eggs were the right way up with, like, the yolk, he couldn't have seen it, so I just don't understand how he knew it was there. There we are. They're overcooked. Your pan's too hot. The secret of frying an egg is basically to poach it in butter. OK. Never forget that. So I'd say, overall, the girls cook eggs better than boys. So tomorrow night we open at 7 o'clock and we've got 76 people to feed. Three courses. That's going to be tough, isn't it? Are you nervous, Jim? Yeah. I like that. Cheers, that you can. Right, clear down and go get your chef's lights on. I'll see you back in 10 minutes. Thank you, boys. Thank you, girls. Ah, oh, this is cool. This is lovely. I've always been the one that's called the shots, and now I'm uh, listening to someone who knows a thousand times better than me, and I'll just have to get used to that. I mean, I, want, I don't want to sound bumptious or I'm a big tough guy or whatever, but, you know, I don't get intimidated by people, no matter what they look like. Me, Abigail. There you go, here I am. Me, Abigail and Paul. Marco hates me. Everything I say, he just looks at me and is like... It's not, I'm quite scared of him at the minute. I love your stuff's here beside me. I'm so scared. You just went to my. I can't lie. I'm on the blue team. Who else is on the blue team? I had no idea who Marco was, but he's just so blinding, and his eyes are like. He makes me feel sick. He wanted to clean the floor with my omelette. Before uh, I met Marco, I, you know, I, I thought if he was rude or whatever, I'd said I'd kick his ass. But mm -mm, I'm not going to kick his ass. Well, so far it's only just the beginning, and he hasn't kind of shouted yet. But you so know when he lets rip, he's going to let rip, big time. For our celebrities then, it was out of the frying pan and into the fire. And for Abby's eggs, out of the frying pan, onto the counter, poked with a fork and into the bin. Of course, only 24 hours to go before the grand opening of Hell's Kitchen. Let's hope there's nothing on the menu as complicated as an egg. So we've met Marco, Marco whatever his name is, uh, but what's really going on in Marco's mind? Well, uh, here now is the culinary philosophy of Marco Pierre White. The true artist is Mother Nature. Great cooks have this natural respect for Mother Nature. That they, they understand what works, what goes together. And one of the things I'd like to do with the celebrities, they must start to appreciate and understand and respect what they're working with. Allow Mother Nature to be the artist. Allow her to do the talking. Everything's a bit too mechanical. I think too many chefs cook by numbers. It's not about pictures, it's about flavour, it's about eating. Whenever I cook, I like to be very simple. I want the turbot to be the star of the show. I want the lobster to be the star. The most poisonous sauce in the kitchen is the chef's ego. I don't like over-fussed, overworked food. Most chefs who are overworking food have no confidence in what they're doing or their own technical ability. When it came to doing the menu for Hell's Kitchen, it wasn't a very easy decision to make, trust me. There was a million dishes I could have done. What I'm trying to do is replicate some of the dishes that we did years ago when we had three stars in the Michelin Guide. So we brought back the pigeon foie gras. We brought back the big strotter with the mori mushrooms. We got the tart to We brought back the famous lemon tart from Harvey's. The work, the labor involved in creating those dishes is enormous. The pigeon looks very simple, but if you look at the amount of work that actually goes into that one dish, it's enormous. 
I believe in refinement. I believe in feeding people. I'm just a cook. And, you know, I think, I think you know, if I was dining in Hell's Kitchen, I, I'd be very excited. I really would. So Marco's excited, and you can tell by the way he raised one eyebrow half an inch. And according to Marco, the chef's ego is the most poisonous thing in the kitchen. Words that might come back to haunt him tomorrow when the ambulances start stacking up outside. But now it was time for both teams to get to grips with the Hell's Kitchen menu. Under the watchful eye of Marco's assistants, they were about to discover exactly which of Marco's world-famous dishes they would be ruining. Pigeon from Bressy with foie gras. Braised, oh my god, braised pig's trotter. That's pig's feet. Yeah. One of the things that was surprising for me was pig's trotters. I mean, I didn't know what that meant. I mean, uh, pig trotter, so you presume it's something to do with the foot. Who's got any pig's feet? The, the people out in the restaurant. You How do you do that? Yeah, I want to find out who's eating pig's trotters. If he goes, oh, he's kind of like, yeah, pig's trotters, five. I'd be like, right, OK, let's just stop the kitchen. Who's eating the pig's trotters? Because I want to see someone eating the foot of a pig that walks in shit. What's that? Sweetbreads. Veal sweetbreads. What is it? Goes inside the pig's trotter. It's, um, it's a gland. Of what? Of, of a calf. No. A gland? You've never tried them before, no? No. Is it nice? Beautiful. Is it, well, yeah? I think it's beautiful, yeah. It doesn't sound very nice, it doesn't look like eating a gland. As if pig's trotter isn't bad enough, to then stuff it with a gland. <laughs> I'm glad I'm on fish anyway. Pig's trotters, not really going to see them in your local supermarket. I would never think I was, you know, fiddling with a bit down the middle and making a groove and then putting loads of moussey stuff with a bit of gland in it. How oh, sticky that gungeon with, isn't it? Gunge. Wow. Would you eat this? Would I eat this? Yeah. What now? No. Yeah. Now you've seen do it. Yeah. I don't know what this would taste like, though, because it looks a bit like mince pie. Do you know what I mean? I think this is pigeon, you know. That's pigeon. Pigeon breast. I think so, yeah. Poor little pigeons, even though I don't like them. No, they're probably wood pigeons. What's that mean? Well, wood pigeons are like, like that's where they don't hit the ground. Wood pigeons stay up in the trees, so they're, they're probably you. If you go, so how do they get them out? Them? Well, they get them out the ground, uh, out the trees, because if they hit the ground, there's more um, disease. Are you like a pigeon expert? I remember there being on the menu pigeon, wood pigeon, and I'd like to say wood pigeon, if you didn't know, grows up in trees. Pigeon breast. Oh, see, I can't. Be, I just seen oxes. That was. Like... That's what I saw. That's a pigeon breast with foie gras. What's foie gras? Foie gras is like goose. <laughs> <laughs> so it's like a rude joke. It's, it's, yeah, it's goose um, liver. The way they actually make it is absolutely despicable. And I'm sure there's going to be human rights... No, goose rights people out there that are saying, you know, it's wrong. Because they do force feed the duck or the goose or whatever it is and then make it so its livers explode. It sounds really appetising. <clears throat> oh, God, it's vile. I just don't think I can do meat and fish. But desserts are stressful. Oh, what are you doing? Oh no, don't tell me I've done it wrong. Oh, you twat. Oh no! I said put them in the pan. Oh, what we've got the pans for? Oh no! So you put the sugar in each of the pans, put the champagne in each of the pan, bring to the boil, pour over the strawberries. Oh no! Get me some more strawberries. Oh, I'm so sorry. I'm gonna kill him. Ah! Brian's very interesting, isn't it? And there is an example of a, a guy being famous for famous I'm sake. Sorry. But he's very entertaining and the, the public love him. Well, I think he's going to cope like everybody wants to see him cope. Oh, no! The champagne and the sugar, where are they? I rinsed it out. So you've thrown the champagne away? Well, because I... Yeah, because I, I just presumed to start fresh. No. Roger, just hit me and I'm get it over with. Save. Yeah, well, I'm just trying to save. There's only three ingredients. I know. How can I get it wrong? And then I thought you were joking with me. <laughs> Thanks when you called me a twat, I went, he's actually not joking. No, correct. Oh, God. Still to come, there's confusion in the red kitchen. You know. It's not a silly question, is it? No. It is a f***ing stupid question, yeah. Well, I'm not a chef yet, am I? And Jim feels the heat. Mm -hmm. I'm just tired, I'm so tired and panicky. I've looked back at my life and everything I've attempted has been crap. Oh, 
Welcome back to Hell's Kitchen, where the restaurant is already packed with celebrities busily drinking their dinner. Well, the first day in Hell's Kitchen proved to be entertaining and informative as ever. We now know that pig strotters are something to do with their feet and that wood pigeons grow on trees. But as preparation for service continued, panic levels started rising as nerves were stretched tighter than the elastic on Marco's waistband. Finally chopped shallots we've got, chopped um, garlic we've got. Yeah. We haven't got a clue about the soup. There's so many dishes here we ain't f***ing done. Rub wine reduction, I don't know how to do that. Well, we have three meat dishes plus the starters. Some of the starters I can't even pronounce, let alone f***ing cook. So Pig's want... trotters are done? Yeah, I'll get them. Great. We'll learn to do them properly tomorrow, I guess, or something. Yeah. Alright. We're not prepared yet because there's two meat dishes that Barry and I haven't done. But I figure a former world champion can persuade people to eat whatever he wants to cook. Stop, 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 stop. You're cutting, them, you're cutting your roots down too far. All, all that's going to happen is you're, going to, you're just going to fall apart when you cook them. See, all, all these just waste, rubbish. You've got, to, you've got to concentrate on what you're doing. You're going to get me in I the shit with Marco, then... Yeah. Sorry, you know. I thought we had to cut the ends off. Yeah, but I didn't show you to cut the ends off. I showed you twice how to do it. It's not rocket science. I thought you cut the ends off, too, so... <laughs> it's actually got steadily worse today, and everyone's sort of walking around with rather sort of bewildered looks on their faces because I'm um, not quite sure. We haven't exactly got a, the, the, the bigger picture yet, put it uh, like that. How long for the dough of soul? Um, six, eight, brown it up and then put it in the, in the pan in the oven for six minutes. How long for the consomme? What's a consomme? There's three hours before the restaurant opens and there's one dish on the, on the main menu which uh, we haven't been shown how to prepare at all yet, so that's kind of interesting. Right, Jim, I've got a little job for you. Nothing squeamish. Take this, yeah. What's that from? That's from the stomach lining of a pig. Right. All I want you to do is pick yeah. out nice pieces like that, Could yeah? That? Squeeze them out. Yeah. I'll put them on a tray, OK? Can you do that? Do you not like that? Is it too squeamish for you? No. Eh? It might be at this moment. Oh. There's another big pan full of it. Oh, what have I done to upset anybody? <laughs> you haven't done anything to upset anybody, because it's all jobs. You've got to do them, yeah? Oof. Do you not like this job? I f***ing don't. Service tonight, we'll probably cock some things up. Um, we'll probably burn things, and, and a lot of stuff we'll think, OK, Marco, we think is not OK, but we're here two days. He's been doing it for, you know, the best part of his life. And he has to accept that. Well, no, I well, have doors on there. that don't open. Seal it. Yeah? What, on his back, what? Yeah, just on there. Well, just pop it on it's there. It's literally ten seconds, so you've got to watch it. We're Otherwise, you turn your back and you're black. an egg in one and... Listen, egg will go in there, yeah? Yes. It's still raw. It's just started to cook, but it's, it's raw, yeah? On this front bit? On the front bit, yeah. yeah. Then you take it from there and you place it into the raw egg white. So the foie gras and the egg cooks together as one. Not on the yellow bit? No, not on the yellow bit, no. The white bit? The white bit, yeah. Why would you put on the yellow bit? Oh, you don't know. It's not a silly question, is it? No. It is a stupid question, yeah. Well, I'm not a chef yet, am I? Look, Vinny had time to show them how to prepare certain dishes so that the other dishes will have to be shown to them in service. What they will do is, is they will learn very quickly this evening. They're on a very sharp learning curve. There's, something you can, there's some things you can teach people, Matthew. You can't teach them logic, though, can you? No. You show them one way, and then 30 seconds later, it's totally different. You show them again, and it's... Okay. Just whatever you show them, they just some of them don't get it. They'll get it sooner or later. They'll get it. Trust me, Matthew. They're going to have to stay concentrated. They're going to have to listen to me. They're going to have to follow me. Otherwise, we're going down. Your trotter goes on this one, on this rack here. OK, but there's a yeah. pan there. Well, no, we're going to move the pan, though, aren't we? I don't know. I'm trying to help you, so you, know, you don't want to be all arsey with me, you know what I'm, I mean? I'm not otherwise, trying to be. I otherwise, I'll send you down sure like a sack of shit right and you'll regret it. Oh. I just want to get it right, that's all. I'm here to work, and, 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 and I don't want to let Marco down. Marco's reputation is, he is here at stake. You know, I can go home and everyone will go, oh, she, uh, you know, what a silly twit. But Marco remains. He thought it was exciting on the Titanic until it went down. <laughs> 
lucky it measures about 950 tonight. <laughs> the ones around the lifeboats. <laughs> Funny line. <laughs> So, all falling apart nicely then. That was sous chef Matt in the red kitchen, by the way. Sort of mini version of Marco, but without the charm and bonhomie. So, a couple of issues to deal with there, but nothing else celebrities won't be able to cope with. That's if they're feeling fit, full of energy, and on top of their game. In Jim Davidson's case, that's a big if. I'm going to have a shower and some fruit for lunch. Just don't have an appetite. Yeah. No, no, if you don't have an appetite, just listen to your body, don't eat. Jim's struggling. I don't know how old he is, but he's struggling. Oh. How's it going, Jim? Oh, what's okay, uh, Marco, sorry. You're not in pain? No, I'm OK. You're all right. right. Yeah. I'm very happy to be under Marco's wing. He just wants to keep his eye on me. He's just worried that I feel a little bit run down at the moment. And that's just one of them things. Ill is ill. Not enough. I'm thirsty no, you as need hell. To, you need to drink about a bottle every half an hour, 40 minutes, yeah? yeah. If you're back, let's get in it and you don't know. Oh, no, get cramps. I've got all that. Don't worry about that. Yeah? I've got the lot. I tell myself positive things and I'm going to be fine, and ten minutes later I walk out feeling shit. Great to see the medic as well. Are you, what's up? Oh, you? no, I need to get some antihistamine. How are you feeling? No, oh, just tired, that's all. Tired and panicky. I'll be all right, getting there. Well done. Well, I actually feel shit, but the man's just told me my blood pressure's fine, so I'm not going to drop dead. I need a f beach in Barbados rather than a. A hot, Studio, sweaty yeah. kitchen. Yeah. I'm just tired. I'm just tired and old and, and, and scared, I think. I was re reflecting on that last night. I always think I can do things, and I can't. I've looked back at my life, and everything I've attempted has been crap, apart from comedy, really. I didn't come here prepared. That's probably the answer to it all. I didn't know it was going to be this... Quite intense. ...shitty. Oh. Really? Seriously? Thank you, madam. I start to feel nauseous and tired. I start to go in a panic. And I project. A lot of people do that at home, don't they? They say, well, God, I feel rough now. How am I going to get through the week? Which makes you all feel rougher. -er. Be good for the old diet, though, being here this week. Oh, yeah. We'll lose a pound or two. The most out of it. Well, provided you don't get stressed, <laughs> yeah. it's actually, actually be good for you. Cause you'll be My running. stress, negative thoughts all the time. Do Terrible you? for do me, you? yeah. Why is that, I should Jim? know better. I don't know. It's not the guy that appears on the stage. No, it's not, I'm afraid. I think the guy who appears on the stage is a bit of a phony. It really is a nervous thing with me. I, I, I used to get terrified of going on stage as well, to the extent of I really could not go on. So it was your comedy was really a therapy, really, wasn't it? Yeah, well, I mean, negative thoughts personally. I was always very positive, yeah. and I've, as I've got older, I've let negative thoughts creep in. Head, yeah. okay. It's, um just fear of not being able to succeed at something, even though you have great ability at doing it. Does that make sense to you? So Jim's struggling, but he's not the only one, sadly. Uh, let's have a look at them uh, now, tonight. Uh, that's the blue kitchen. You can tell that by the blue tiles in the background. The red kitchen tends to have more red tiles. And that's uh, Jim Davison. Good to see him back on his feet and looking in the peak of, peak of health. Uh, that's the red kitchen, the red tiles I was telling you about. And that's the girls, I think. Oh, yes, yes, that's Rosie. Rosie Boycott, she needs to um, calm down a bit. She's working a bit too hard. Have a sit down, Rosie. Now, uh, Marco Pierre White has been in the restaurant business for 30 years, and he has three Michelin stars, which you'll know if you've talked to him for anything longer than 20 seconds. And he knows all about how a restaurant works. Oh, yes. A restaurant is two worlds. You've got the kitchen, which is my domain. And you have the front of house, which is quite serene, quite nice, which is Nick, the major D's domain. His job is to run things in the front of house smoothly. It's my role to go around the room to see everybody's happy, and then obviously making sure that Marco's happy. <laughs> I take the orders, make sure that the order gets delivered to the pass. Nick gives me the order. And then I call on the order to whichever kitchen, red or blue. And then they have to start working on that straight away. We have three main stations. We have meat, we have fish, and we have pastry. They've got starters, they've got garnish, they've got fish, they've got meat. So you've got to compile things together, deliver them to me. They have to juggle like I have to juggle, because there might be 10 tables in order at the same time, but they have to follow my lead. 
and I will then demand that that table comes to me within a certain amount of minutes. They must all communicate with each other and with myself. We're talking minutes here. That's how we speak. Five minutes, three minutes, two minutes. So everything comes to the pass at the same time. The pass is the basically the hot plate, if you like, of where the food comes from and, and is finished onto. So basically all the chefs will do all their preparations. Everything comes to the center of the pass, where Mark is dressing the finished foods. Then that plate then goes onto a tray and then he, he, he tells us that it's ready to go. Nothing goes over the pass unless it's of an acceptable standard within their capabilities. I know it's impossible with those individuals on the very first night to do 76 customers. That's not possible. So within my mindset, I'm aiming for 40 to 50 with these people. I don't think they can get there. Right, out of all the diners, Marco thinks that maybe only 40 or 50 will get any food. Sounds like there's going to be a lot of disappointed customers, by my reckoning, 40 or 50. So as Hell's Kitchen prepared to open its doors for the very first time, Commandant White took the opportunity to uh, give a rallying speech to his troops. Not that they needed rallying, after all, they'd had two full days of training and there were only 76 celebrity guests outside expecting three courses of Michelin-starred food. What could possibly go wrong? Quick briefing before serving. You're there. Stand where you work. OK. This is our first night of Hell's Kitchen. We've got to feed 76 people. I don't know whether it's possible, but I think we should give it a very good go. Don't try and impress me. Impress yourselves. That's what it's all about. Do it for yourselves. Rosie, you're on pastry. Annika, you're on the fish with Abigail. I forgot your name already. <laughs> Adele. Adele. Kelly. The bird from Emmerdale. <laughs> and Kelly, you're on the meat. What are you doing? We're doing the, um, the sole, the tail, and the salmon. That's right. What starters? Um, the scallops and the ragu. Very good. Well remembered. And let's not forget one thing. You're in competition with a blue team. It's going to be rough. Remember, I might say things you might not like. Keep your head down, keep on pushing. And trust me, if you believe in me and we get through it, at the end of the night you'll think, actually, fantastic. Good luck with the service, OK? Thank you. Good bless, girls. <laughs> I think tonight, I think all of the girls are pretty um, calm people. Um, and I think that that could be a strength. That could be our big strength. Team Tom. Oh, girl, yeah, team right, Tom. Right, right. So we're going to win. Yeah, They're not going to win. Right. Definitely yeah. going to win. We're just so calm, focused, don't panic. panic. Mm. If, we need any if we've got a problem, we'll just shout. Sure. Awesome. Exactly. OK, cool. Yeah. We're going to win. We are. We've got it. Definitely. Is Peter's coming tonight, you know? I'm going to... Is he? Your boyfriend? Aww. How do you know? Yeah. Does he? The maitre d' just said, well, tell Peter you're on fish. Aww. I was like, is he from New Zealand? So I was saying, no, come, come and hold it one and two, I'm scared. No, it'll be fine. Thank you very much indeed. I'll be interested to see how it goes, and you know, it's a pleasure to be here, obviously, on the opening night. Okay, boys, do you know what we are tonight? We're a load of lemmings. And we're going to go off that cliff, aren't we? <laughs> Follow but... you off it, Carl. <laughs> <laughs> so, Paul and Lee, you're on the fish. You've got the ragu. You've got the scallops. You've got to get your timings right. About three minutes for the ragu, seven minutes for the scallops. You've got the trotter, 12 minutes. Yeah. The pigeon, five and four, five breast and four. side down. Yes. Brian, yeah. if you're not busy, if they need your help, try and help them. Of course. Remember, you're working as a team. Communicate with each other. Work together. It's going to be a very, very, very tough evening. This is the hardest service of my life. Remember, I haven't been in the kitchen for seven and a half years, which is a long time. So you might be feeling a bit nervous. Remember, I'm on the front line, and that is the front line. Everyone is looking at me. I have a job to do, and I will try and do what I do best. 
and that is juggle, is get the food out, is inspire people, is make you want to cook. The most important, I think, is that you're in competition with the birds in the red kitchen. I think I am going to get a little, a little bit on the competitive side, because good looks don't come into it when there's a com competition. Uh, we've, we've got to win. My money's on the boys. I think you'll win, because I think you're stronger. I think, I think you're more aggressive. I think they're going to bottle it. But maybe they'll prove me wrong. So my money's on you. I give you two to one. I give them seven to two. Good luck, boys. Okay. Have a Two grand on the goes. <laughs> Coming up, Marco gets hot under the collar. I don't want you engaging women like that, especially when they make comments about me and my family. And the Hell's Kitchen diners feel his wrath. Apparently, you didn't like Excuse the Excuse me, you've got one of two options. You either say sorry or you go. Welcome back to Hell's Kitchen, where all around you can hear the clatter of knives, the rattle of pans, and the screech of pizza delivery mopeds. But back to last night, and Hell's Kitchen was about to throw open its doors. Where are celebrity chefs prepared? Well, in a word, no. In two words, God, no. I'm here for a free dinner. Yeah, I, I, should, I, I should hope I get fed. But he does actually terrify me. He's wearing a white bandana around his yes. forehead and he still <laughs> looks menacing. Exactly. That exactly. makes him as hard exactly. as a coffin now, in my book. We're not here to impress people, we're here to feed people. You're here to impress yourself. Does everyone know what they want? Okay. Are we going to do the first order? Yeah. Are you, yeah, you going to show us how to dress the soup and the scallops? Don't, and don't, 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 don't you panic. I'm going to go for the scallops, please. Each team must serve half the restaurant. The first order goes to the blue team. Not at all, we're here. Here we go. Two scallops in, one caviar, one consomme. Away in seven minutes. Two veal, one trotter, one salmon. Come on, trotter straight in. Tim, yeah. rally them up. I'll tell you something, you're going to do the full 15 rounds tonight, Barry. Good, good, I'm ready. Boys, can I ask you one question? Yeah. yeah good. What are fingers for? Bernie. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Straight in, straight in, push him at the back. Four and a half minutes, Jim. OK. Four and a half minutes, Barry. Yeah. I'll have another one of them. Yeah, but not yet. No, I've got it, I've got it, I've got it, Sasha, don't worry. The boys, you know, they had it hard. Very early on, they had it very hard. How long for this scallop? All the tickets were blue, 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 blue. Yep, let's go. Shut the oven, shut the oven. Hold it from come with me. Go. That's enough. What are you trying to do, get them pissed? No, I thought you put some more in. Oh, shit. Who the f would want a restaurant? I can't believe it, unless you get a million pound a year. It's so hard. Just sit that scallop there. Just don't open it. Why are you opening it? Show me the table it's going to, boy. I think he'll fare very well under pressure if he's learning something. I hope he wins. I think he will. <laughs> Go say hello. <laughs> don't tell him. Get it out now. Get one pen out now. One salmon, one trotter, straight away. Hello, hello Mum. Samaj, one caviar, one scallops, one scallop straight in, please. Well, two salmon, Samaj. <laughs> I'm not we'll going to disturb him. He looks far too busy. We'll pair that up as one table. <laughs> Listen to me. I said we'll pair that up as one table. Yes, Marco. Yes, yes Marco. I want the scallops in. I'm sure it would be beautiful. This okay. is your mum's table. Two salmon. So select two nice pieces of salmon for mum. Make her proud of you, boys, even though she already is. We haven't had any food yet. We although, have although, our... although the bread tastes like bread, so that's... No, we've been in half an hour. We are waiting rather a long time. Well, we've just had our starters, and we found them just a little bit too greasy. Go, okay, sorry. Thank you. Thank you. I'm so sorry. Stop laughing, Paul. Have you got time? Ignore them. You've got a job in hand. If you don't want to do the job, go and sit with them. OK? 
Yeah. Because while I'm yes, working Marco. my bollocks off and you're laughing and having fun and allowing your ego to get the better of you, I don't find it funny. Sorry, Paul. You didn't have an ego. You, you just behave yourself. Oh, I know your ex-wife. I know all about it. Good girl. Nicholas, clear that table. Take everything off. I don't want you engaging women like that, especially when they make comments about me and my family. I'm sorry about that, Marco. Do not engage them. I was not talking to them, I'm talking to you, because I don't like comments like that. Please be understanding. Yeah, neither do I. Had you ignored them, they would not have said it, and I would not have had to say what I said. We're here to do a job. Thank you. I will not cook dinner for people who make rude comments. Sorry, sir. I do apologise. Unfortunately, I won't be serving you any more food this evening um, because the lady was rude to Marco. What lady? The lady who's sitting with you. Well, my wife yes. was rude to Marco. Yes. What, to his face? Yes. No. And with Wait, what, just now? Yes. Oh, OK. Mr. Mighty Boots there says, so like, oh, you should go and sit out there with them if you want. I'm doing all the work. So I said, you know what? Don't talk to them about ego, mister. I know all about your ego. Plus, I know your ex-wife, Lisa Butcher, so I know all about you, mate. So don't give any of that shit to me. You can write, and he goes, easy, tiger. I don't want your food anyway. Piss off. Oh, there you go. Sorry, Well, girl. apparently we're not getting any. Scallops to start with. They were a little bit, uh, well, undercooked. I was a little bit worried about food poisoning. We both had scallops, but mine was really cold and not cooked, so I've decided best not to eat it. Please don't tell Marco, because I don't want to be thrown out. I've already seen he's thrown someone out tonight. Could you take that back with a compliment to me and say that they are freezing cold? They're supposed to be cold. Uh, OK, but they're freezing cold. Right. I mean, as you know, and um, there are far too many of them. Uh, and frankly, I'm... I think bland is the um, description uh, that I would use. Right, I'll just take them back gladly, but that's how it's presented. I, it appears that somebody's just taken them out of the freezer and put them on a plate. Okay, well, I'll, I'll try my best for you. Thank you. No problem. What's wrong? Uh, the gentleman says it's bland in flavour, there's too many of them, and it's freezing cold. Okay. What table is he? Table 23, Marco. Please have a nice evening. Yes, Excuse me. Hey, Ben. OK, bring me a tray. Bring me a tray. Smoke, please. Unfortunately, as we know, you're not going to enjoy your evening this evening. We're, going to, we're not going to serve you any more food. None at all. Yeah. Sorry about that. There's nothing wrong with the asparagus, sir. So. Yeah. Sorry, man. That's Marco's rules. Sorry about that. Can I have a word? Oh, he's busy at the moment. I'll find if I can get you to speak to him, but... Nicholas! If he wants to apologise, I'll feed him. Yes, but he's got to come and see me. I've got, I want to see the whites of his eyes. I want him to be convincing, otherwise I'm not feeding him. He can go home. Mark was quite happy to feed you if you apologise for the asparagus. Oh, no, 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 we're going to... No, no, no. Apologise? No, we're not going to... I'll have a conversation with Mark if he gets himself out here and talks to me. I can bring you up to the pass if you so wish. Let's go. No, 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 no! no, no. no. Go on! Go on! Go on. Go on. Go on. Go on. Mr. White. Hello, David Mitchell. Very nice to meet you. Um, apparently you didn't like... Excuse me, you've got one of two options. You either say sorry or you go. Think about your guests. You've got five minutes. <laughs> Well, I'll be going. To the longest walk in history, boy. Thank you. I don't need your advice any longer. Thank you. I'll be going. Thank you. Take care. Bye-bye. Nice shirt. Have a nice evening. Got his chance, didn't he? I'm not taking that kind of SHIT. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. <laughs> So, a lot of icy cold food. Not sure why it was so cold. Perhaps Marco looked at it. Still, uh, credit where it's due. That man in the nice shirt strode off into the night. No mean achievement when someone's just shoved half a pound of asparagus up your bottom. Uh, now, if you'd like to come and be roundly abused by Marco at first hand, you'd be most welcome. All you have to do for your chance to win a table is answer this culinary conundrum. In the nursery rhyme, what was Little Miss Muffet eating? Was it A, curds and whey? B, apples and pears, or C, 
plates of meat? If you think you might possibly know the answer, call 09012 934 934. Calls cost £1 from BT landlines, mobile and other networks may be higher. Or text HELL plus A, B or C and your full name, 26337. Calls cost £1 plus one standard network rate reply message. Hope I'm not boring you. Entrance must be 18 or over and lines close at 10 o'clock tomorrow morning. Entries received after this time will not be counted but may still be charged. But hey, enough fun. So, uh, the blue kitchen was in chaos, the reds in contrast were a picture of calm efficiency, and that's how it would have remained if someone hadn't gone and spoiled things by ordering some food. I like this strange feeling of being in the waiting room. It's like, uh, it's like being on death row here now, girl. Well, no, I wouldn't have put it like oh, that. Trust that's me, your it is. View. Trust me. Have you ever done a service before? We were all quite terrified, but you know, the first orders were coming through and you're, you're waiting like a sort of coiled spring and nothing happened. Yes, Marco. Damage. Here you go. Blue team, one consomme, one, two scallops in, one caviar. One salmon, one sole, one veal, one turbot, Tim. The first order went to the blue team, the second order and the third, I think, <laughs> by which time we'd all kind of slightly lost that uh, edge. Remember your family and friends are out there. The last thing you want is your friends and family coming all this way not to be fed. Right or wrong? You haven't answered me. Thank you for the response. If I give you my time and my wisdom, I expect you to give me your time back. Thank you. Yes, Marco. Trust me, I will guide you through. Give me rough. OK, Marco Samarsh, so uh, red team. Um, and then, of course, all hell did break loose. Samarsh, red team, one asparagus, three consomme. One turbot, two salmon, one veal. Samage. Yes, Marco. Yes, Thank Marco. you. How long for the scallops? How long for the scallops? 15 seconds. Thank What's you. black and lives under the grill? Brioche. Put another one on. Another brioche. Ooh. One turbot, one sole, one sole, one trotter, two pigeon. Two tables that get together. We. Yes, Marco. Yes, Marco. Yes, Thank you very much. We've got an hour to get everything out, including the desserts. The pressure is absolutely immense. The three veal, two sole, one turbot away all together. We haven't got long. And you've got the pressure of orders just being shouted, saying two veal, two foie gras, like literally just shouted. Is the sole ready? Yes, yeah. it's in the oven. But is it ready? So why do I want the veal? Communicate, I told you. Communicate. It's like a car crash in our kitchen. So keep on in. pushing. We haven't got long left. Are you listening, girls? Yes, Marco. Are you talking to the walls and the mirrors? No, Marco. Thank you. I'm sort of going from absolutely, this is the most horrendous thing I've ever done in my life, to a, a feeling of, you know, dazzling excitement. Where's your lovely oh, for sake? Don't you listen, you girls? What did I call away, Matt? Hey? Two veal salter. Yeah, and why have they done one deal? It's ready, it's coming. It's, no, it's not ready and it's not coming. No, if I relied on you, we'd be still doing the first table at 7.30. At Hell's Kitchen, last orders have to be in by 9.15 so that the kitchen can close at 10.30. No, 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 it's after 9.15. 15 seconds for the spot. It's after 9.15, Nicholas. What's the rules? 9.15, boss. What time is it? No, 9.20, boss. No, take it back, sorry. Your mistake, Nicholas, not mine. You can explain, you didn't get the order in time, OK? Not... Well, I just thought maybe you'd be able to do this one on, the, on this time, boss. What's the order? It's basically a sole, pigeon, turbot and trotter, boss. I'll do it for you, Nicholas, now, f*** off. When he first came through the door, I saw him, and I pretended that I didn't because I asked him to come and see me. And then when I saw him, then I was like, oh, I don't want him to be here, I don't want him to be here. I was, I was so scared. Excuse me, can you, can you come back in about ten minutes when they finish, please? Thank you very much. Not yet, not yet. Sorry, Abby, girl, but we've just got a job to do. No, it's fine. <laughs> Still to come, there's romance in the red kitchen. Kiss, kiss. How are you? And the diner's verdicts are in. Here are some of the comments made by the diners. The scallops were tasteless and lifeless. Well, they are dead. Ah. 
Welcome back to this brand new series of Hell's Kitchen. Around me, a host of top celebrities are busy soaking up the atmosphere or getting hammered, as it's also known. But back to last night, which found Peter Crouch away from the football pitch and eating in Hell's Kitchen. So Hell's Kitchen's gain is England's gain. Well done, girls. Thank you for staying concentrated, unlike the boys. Is she doing this every night? Yeah, she's up here. Two weeks. For the next two weeks. Can you see me? You okay? Have you had a good time? Kiss again. How are you? How bad do I look? Oh, such a laugh. To see him was like, oh, and he loved the food. So that that was good. Hi. Oh. I'm sad now. Is that your ratatouille yet? No, I've done that. Salad was my signature dish. I only had the blue. I took it in. I felt a bit bad though. It's all right. You're right. You're it's right. Your team, mate. You're right. Yeah, I'm good. Really good. You're good, bub. Yeah, I'm sure I do in my uh, chef wise. Nice to see you anyway. I didn't want to go over and talk to him. I was like, no, I can't talk to you. I've got, I've got cleaning to do. It's not saying no more. Yeah. I'm allowed to speak to you after. You got your phone on? No, it's not allowed. <laughs> I'll do it, Adele. Sure? Yeah, yeah. Oh, I don't want to go and talk. Yeah, I'll, I'll do it. Cool. I'm going to have a drink of water and I'll pretend to have been yeah? just for two minutes. You do well. All right. Yeah. When you're there and you're focused, you don't want to have the chance to speak to people. You can't let people off put you. So I didn't really get to speak to him that much. Do you know, I didn't realise how much our graph it was going to be like, like physically sweating. We did it, we know, we did 76. We did? We did them all, 76. Did we? Did we? Did we? Right, I'm not doing anything else because I'm going to die. Tim was wonderful, he was everywhere. You could hear his name being shouted every two minutes. We got a lot of help. It's tough, isn't it? Ooh, tough. tough? We just said this is worth some 15 rounds. He said, you were dead, I'm getting... I was Hyperventilated. <laughs> 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 Marco worked extremely hard. He really worked. We couldn't have done it without Marco. Not a chance. Sweating like a f***ing nun in a brothel. If Roger had not have been there, I basically would have had to um, walk up to Marco during service on the front line and say, I'm dreadfully sorry, Marco, but I have not got a clue what I'm doing. And you want four desserts? I'm under no illusion. I would not be able, I would not feel fit or feel free in letting go of Roger really ever. Well done, Kelly. Thank you. How's your hand? Which one? This one. <laughs> we couldn't have done what we did without Matthew and Marco. Matthew was wonderful. He was there all the time, really stayed on us, and was actually quite nice about everything. We got well, the 76. Oh, yeah. And he was saying he wanted 50, between 40 and 50. Yeah. <laughs> six. Yeah, well. It felt like 76. It's hard, isn't it? It's yeah, really it is hard. really, really hard. How hard. Matt did do a lot of our cooking tonight, and, like, a few times he said, like, oh, you've got me running around. He did do a lot. He did do most. <laughs> well, it will be harder tomorrow, because I do less tomorrow. Yes. You just leave, it, leave you to it, basically, yeah. tomorrow. Yeah? So you're on your own tomorrow? Yeah. Well, well done both teams, although uh, Marco and his two chefs did do some of the more trivial bits, like cooking the food. So after the last contented diner had headed off, swearing and cursing into the night, Marco gathered the celebrities around for the moment of truth. The diner's verdicts, delivered by his maitre d' Nick. Yes, every last customer in Hell's Kitchen is asked to judge their dining experience, or lack of it, by giving a mark out of ten. So who would come out on top, or at least be slightly further from the bottom? The ladies in red or the boys in blue? I'm 
pretty biased. Like nine, nine for the start, ten for the main course, ten for the dessert, and ten. Um, I've just written fantastic what? looking chefs. <laughs> The first thing I would like to say is thank you for respecting me. Thank you for listening to me. When I say stay concentrated, keep your head down, find that inner strength, I mean it. And I think tonight you did. You've still got more to find, trust me. There's two lapses when people came to the pass during service and tried to attract individuals' attention. Please do not engage them. I think you did very well tonight to say it was the first time you ever walked into a service. Tough night, very tough. Tonight I stepped in for you. And yes, helped you to stepped the best in a lot. You worked very hard. And I'll always, I'll always be there for you. I'll always be there to guide you. But you know, you have to do a lot more for yourself. And I think now you've seen it, you'll want to do it. This is the best part of the evening. Well, it's like the luxury, it? <laughs> You've all met Nicholas, haven't you? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, we can just respect Nicholas for five minutes. The teams served half the restaurant each. Here are some of the comments made by the diners of the Red Kitchen. The scallops were tasteless and lifeless. A triumph. Well, they are dead. <laughs> Main course. The what they wanted? Pulsating in the mouth. <laughs> was cooked to perfection. Oh. Delicious. Um. It fell off the bone. Good. Yeah, I wish you fell off her chair. <laughs> Oh, no, very good. Dessert. The chocolate tart promised more than it delivered. And she'd know. It tasted like crap chocolate spread. Taking off fence, Rosie. So over to the blues, the boys. Yeah. Started the frog art and duck egg. I thought the jus was reminiscent of HP sauce. Always good with a fried egg. But can I just say something, Nicholas? Yes, Doesn't it tell you what they were? Indeed, and do you know what my dear father used to always say to me? You can dress a pig in a suit, but you can't stop him grunting. Main course, it was a pig foot with chicken and omelette. Weird. The blackberry souffle was really lovely. Tart blackberry combined with sweet souffle, delicious. Oh. 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 So the average score for the Blue Kitchen is 6 out of 10. Oh, that's oh really God. good! Well done. And the average score for the Red Kitchen is 7 out of 10. Oh. So the winner of this evening's oh. is the Red well Kitchen. Woohoo! The girls won. We, we got um, 7 out of 10 from the diners, which was a great achievement, and we beat the boys. Well done. Well done. Well done. Maybe the girls will get too confident. We know now we've got to raise our game a little bit, and I think we could come out on top tomorrow. Thank you very much for your support. Thank you. Good night, girls, and well done. Thank you, Roger. The girls got 7 out of 10, which they should be very happy, and that should give them reason to really work hard tomorrow. But the boys got 6 out of 10, and what they should be thinking is, we can't have this. It's now for them to gel as a unit and to push out that food and to get things right. So the Reds went 1-0 up while Peter Crouch sat and watched a situation Liverpool fans will be all too familiar with. That's it for now. Join us again tomorrow at 9 on ITV1 to find out how our celebrities fare on their second night in Hell's Kitchen. Will the boys make a comeback? Will the cold, greasy scallops the diners ate last night make a comeback? Will Marco empty the entire restaurant? Find out tomorrow, but from us now, it's good night. Can't wait for tomorrow. Bring it on. Well, for all the latest news, gossip profiles, and much more from the programme, text HELL to 8339. Text